who will be um, conducting the audits, uh, reviewing all of the paperwork that will be submitted by producers. How did we get here? I think that's a question that a lot of producers do have. And I think it's uh, pretty obvious to all of us who have lived through and experienced the 2015 highly pathogenic avian influenza outbreak in Minnesota, in Iowa, in Wisconsin, Dakotas, many other states, uh, that that was a devastating event for all of us. As a result of that and with the uh, USDA and the federal government um, shelling out lots of money to cover the expenses for indemnity of, of the birds that were depopulated, the cleaning and disinfection efforts, as well as um, all of the people that were involved with that event, uh, it was plain to uh, myself, Shauna, as well as producers that uh, that payment probably was not going to happen again. When they evaluated the event, they took a look at things, they saw that one glaring um, uh, problem situation with this whole event was biosecurity. With the um, influenza virus moving from farm to farm in these different states, they saw that there was certainly a lack of this biosecurity on poultry operations. So an interim rule was passed in which uh, um, poultry producers now are required to document their biosecurity plans and plans that they have in effect. Uh, this is a requirement now if producers are going to be paid indemnity for their flocks. In order for the industry to have some input on these biosecurity plans and the 14 principles, we found a good place and, and a, really a proper place for it within the National Poultry Improvement Plan or the NPIP. When it was put together, this provided an opportunity for the industry to have some input into how these principles were created, how they were formed, and how they should be used. And I think the bottom line is that in, in addition to avian influenza, uh, these biosecurity principles can also be used uh, preventing salmonella, uh, mycoplasma, as well as avian influenza infections spread to our poultry flocks. And that, and that includes not only our turkey flocks, but layers broilers as well as uh, backyard flocks as well. We want to make sure that we get as many of these audits completed as, as we can, but however we recognize that the current rule and the requirement for a biosecurity plan be in place is only part of the interim path rule and so that if you have not completed an audit um, you can as we had as we did in 2015 self certify that you have a biosecurity plan in place and basically what that means is we will ask you do you have a biosecurity plan and if you say yes we call it good we will not be looking for additional paperwork or documentation So the biosecurity audits that will be conducted by the board will be paper-based. There will be no site visits. Um, and so when producers or are concerned about um, people visiting their farm, their premise, um, none of that will be happening. We, this uh, paper uh, audit will be um, documents that will be submitted to the board and they can be either electronic, they can be paper, they can be sent through the mail. Before we conduct an audit, we first need to be able to contact you. We have a lot of contact information for many of our premises, but we need to ideally know who the best person is to contact in order to conduct this audit. On the Board of Animal Health website, there is a biosecurity premises audit information form. 
that we are requesting all producers to fill out. This gathers information about addresses for all of your sites, contact information, um, which farms would be included under one biosecurity plan so that we can properly prepare for and conduct that audit. I think that if producers um, go to our Board of Animal Health website, right on the front page we've got NPIP Biosecurity. Uh, you click on that link for our internet friendly poultry producers. Um, and, and you've got links to a number of different resources there that include the University of Minnesota Extension. And I really have to credit Abby and, and, and uh, you know, putting together the YouTube videos, working with us to provide some resources for producers. Because I think that if you do follow it step by step, you know, we can get through this. We really can. When your farm has been selected for an audit, around the first of the month, Krista from our office will give you a call and notify you that you have been selected and that you have 30 days to submit your biosecurity material. During that audit notification, we will be providing a list of all of the questions that we will be asking or reviewing during the audit process. When you're preparing for your audit, it's really important that you look at all of those questions and make sure that each of those questions is addressed in the uh, principles of your audit and the different sections of your plan. When we complete the audit portion of uh, these biosecurity principles, there's two things that we're looking for. First, we want to make sure that the 13 points that are included in the NPIP biosecurity principles are included in your plan. And the second thing we're going to be looking for is ensuring that what is written in your plan is actually happening on the farm. In addition to that overarching biosecurity plan, we also will be looking and, and requiring and asking for some very site-specific information that could include training records, it could include mortality and morbidity sheets, uh, it could include uh, rodent control um, uh, documentation, and I think this is the tough part for a lot of our producers. They have the information in their head. They have it um, someplace, but they don't have it in a document. NPIP provisions require that uh, participants keep their records for three years. We recognize that a lot of producers may only keep records for the life of the flock. We are encouraging producers now to keep records for longer periods of time, for that three years, during our auditing process, we have been requesting records for the past six months. And so moving forward in 2018 and 2019, uh, we are strongly encouraging all producers to hang on to those records in case that we are requesting uh, further documentation past the life of that flock. Through the audit process, we've seen a number of different types of documentation that is presented to us for, as an example, rodent control or mortality records. Some producers are very tech savvy and use an electronic, um, um, electronic or computerized record keeping system. Some producers do all of their record keeping through some sheets of paper that are hanging in each barn. Both of those are very acceptable to us. What we're looking for is that you as the producer are somehow documenting the actions that you're taking um, and have a way of uh, proving what's actually being done on the farm. During the audit process, while we're reviewing your biosecurity plan and supporting documentation, we may identify areas in the plan that we find uh, needs additional clarification or may not fully describe um, what's required to meet those NPIP biosecurity principles. We may then contact the producer for some additional information. We are calling those corrective actions um, and we send uh, or notify the producer that we need some additional information. Uh, we normally give that producer two weeks to, to get that information gathered up and back to us so that we can then include it within our plan. Dale and I have been conducting audits for about four months now. Uh, we have probably completed a dozen audits. Um, the majority of those audits that we've completed we have sent back to the producers for some relatively basic corrective actions 
or additional documentation that was required. Um, so if you, during the audit process, get notified of some additional materials or clarification that we were asking for, or that corrective action, don't be alarmed. Most producers have gone through that as part of their auditing process, and it's just something that we're working through and we're working through together. We've had some biosecurity audits that have been two pages. And I don't know if you've reached the 200 page mark yet, Shauna, but I've certainly had some that have been at least 100. And so I think that for every operation, it's going to be a little bit different. I think these um, company biosecurity plans can be for one premise. They can be for a dozen premises. And so I think that's um, something that we look at, too, uh, when we're, when we're um, trying to evaluate and audit some of these biosecurity and we understand that this process is new. It's new for the official state agencies. It's new for the producers. And so we certainly understand that there might be some back and forth in communication and working with the producers to make sure that we all get this right uh, because it's best for your farms and it's best for our industry in the state. It, it really is a, a team effort from all different levels. And I know that we've got producers from Rochester to Roseau and everybody in between. And we really need to make sure that everybody is on board with these biosecurity audits. So I, along with Shauna, along with the rest of the uh, staff here at the MPTL, uh, realize that we're all in this together, okay? I think that with um, our producers and these biosecurity audits, we really don't want it to just be a paper exercise. We really want to make sure that you, you as a producer, are not the first farm that has high path AI. Kind of a wrap here. Um, number one, they're going to be paper audits only, no site visits. They will be conducted by myself and Dr. Boss with some assistance from our field staff. For producers who have multiple sites, they can all be included in one company biosecurity plan. However, we will look and we will drill down to one specific site for the audit and requesting specific information. We will notify producers around the first of the month, give them 30 days to complete their audit. Uh, they, will, they will be working with myself Shauna and Krista here at the MPTO. When we receive those audits uh, and we get them back, they can be dropped off, they can be emailed, they can be mailed. Um, uh, we will review them and if there are any deficiencies that we call corrective actions, we will be contacting the producer and asking for that additional information and typically we'll give them a couple of weeks to get that information back to us. So far, all of the audits that we have conducted have been satisfactory. satisfactory. They've all passed, so there is hope. And for all of you producers out there who are um, uh, worried about this, my message to you is relax. We'll get through this. We're all in it together.